Hey guys, what's up? Pastor Matt here. Thanks for checking into the YouTube channel. Uh, if you're new or visiting, my name is Pastor Matthew Everhart. I'm the senior pastor of Gospel Fellowship PCA. We are a Reformed Bible-believing church just north of Pittsburgh. So if you're looking for a church like that, you found one, come visit us sometime on the Lord's Day. Well, in this video, we're going to try a different kind of Bible review, to be completely honest. I've been doing this Bible review thing for a long time. One of the originals, in fact, it always goes way back, actually, to Mark Bertrand and the Bible design blog. And then there's Randy Brown and Bible buying guide. But the video Bible review people are just like flourishing. They're just new Bible review channels all the time. And uh, some of them are so good. They're just way better than what I'm doing, even though I was back at the very beginning of this whole Bible review phenomenon. But nevertheless, I get bored of my own Bible reviews, to be completely honest. But um, every time Crossway hits me up to do a new Bible review, I keep telling myself I want to get out of this and just keep doing the theological content, because that's what I'm really interested in, the Edward stuff, the preaching videos, that kind of thing. But then Crossway will contact me and they'll be like, hey, we got this new thing and we want you to review it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, I have to see that one. And such is the case for this Bible that we're going to look at today. Uh, it is the ESV uh, Heirloom Bible Heritage Edition in Horween Leather Brown. So here's the box for that. We're going to go through some of the details here in just a moment. So what we're going to do that's a little bit different. Maybe you'll like this. Maybe you won't. I don't know. I don't know what to give you anymore to keep you happy viewers, but we're going to do a pictorial review rather than a video review. I do have the Bible right here in front of me, and I will tell you what some of the other reviewers have said is that this Bible is particularly difficult to film because of how beautiful the leather is on the outside, and that's what sets this one apart is you're going to notice the name that it's Horween Leather, and I wanted to Google that myself because I wasn't exactly sure what that meant. But Horween is a name brand. It's apparently a certain type of leather. It's, a, it's a, a product, not a location or a certain type of animal or anything like that. So I would suggest that you go and just give Horween Leather a Google and you can read all about how they do their leather. So in this sense, Crossway is really teaming up with um, a leather producer to put this incredible cover on this Bible. And this is going to be different from some of their other goat skin or calf skin or certainly their genuine leather editions. The leather is about as high quality as you can get. So let's go ahead and dig into the, uh, the video review here. Here's the Bible sitting out on my desk. Um, notice its unique coloration right here. And this Bible is actually going to change colors over time. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what the Horween leather does. Is it patinas, which means that it actually is going to change its look over time, especially as it gets worn, as it gets bent as it gets uh, shaped in the hands, as it gets dinged up. And you're going to see that this leather actually does ding up quite nicely. And some of you say, that's a, I don't want my leather to get dinged up. Yeah, you do, because it looks awesome when it's got some wear on it. So um, having a look here at the outside, you're going to notice that like many of Crossway's Bibles and most good Bibles these days, it does have perimeter stitching coming along the edges right here. And that's going to give your cover some extra durability, make sure it doesn't fall apart. Um, here, here's a look at the box. Now, my box came dinged up already. So that's probably because when they look to send out Bibles to reviewers, sometimes they'll give the reviewer one that, you know, maybe a little got a little uh, got dropped, got shoved, got put too many on a rack on the, on the crate or whatever. So my box is a little bit dinged up here, but you're going to get this nice, beautiful crossway box. So you can store it or use it or use it to travel. And here's the information for you if you're interested in the ISBN number. Maybe you want to search this on Amazon or some other bookstore to, to find it. Uh, you can get this. You can just screen grab this or freeze the video or whatever. One thing you're going to notice here is the price. This is the retail price, $329. That's about as much as I've ever seen on any retail Bible. Now, of course, you can go to Skylar and get some of their stuff getting pretty expensive or R.L. Allen. But as far as your, your main publishers, your Crossways, your Thomas Nelsons, your Zondervans, this is really, really getting up there. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it's because of the name brand leather, the Horween leather. Um, it's also because Crossway is going back to the Netherlands. They're back to Youngblood. Now they had switched over to China for a while and the results were pretty mixed. I, I was fairly kind and charitable when I reviewed the, the Crossway China Bibles, but a lot of the other reviewers weren't. And Crossway definitely heard that lesson 
And so they went back to the Netherlands at Youngblood. And you're going to see that this Bible is actually very, very excellently done. It's really quite takingly beautiful. It's startling. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when I saw my wife for the first time in real life, it's like, whoa, you just, you're just kind of captured by, by the beauty of setting your eyes on it. And that's exactly how I feel with this, this particular Bible right here. So anyway, steep price. Now, I'm going to guess that if you go over to Amazon or CBD, it's not actually going to be $329 because usually this price on the box is the highest I ever see. I almost never see the Bible actually for that price. So I'd give it a little Google search and just find out what you can come up with. My guess is it's going to actually be less than that. Okay, so looking at the box here, we've got 9.2 point type. That's pretty large. And we're going to see actually when we look at the leading, which is the space between the lines, it's actually going to look a lot better than that. That's a black letter text, and it is going to be single column. And of course, it's Smythe's own with a lifetime guarantee. So here, when you open up the box, you get this nice pledge card. This is basically a statement of its quality. You can call this number if you have any issues with your Bible. Crossway has always had very excellent customer relationships as far as I'm concerned. And when you open up the cover of the box, open this guy up right here, you're going to notice that like many of the new Crossway Bibles, it comes with this this nice felt inner liner. And that gives the Bible a little bit of extra protection when it's traveling in the box. And it also just looks really nice. Uh, for some of you who are more Bible collectors and Bible users, it's nice to store this in the box and just keep it extra protected. I don't personally do that myself because I actually like my Bibles to get dinged up and worn. So other than a nice frill, it doesn't really have any practical purpose for me. All right, so here's the cover again. One of the things that I'll tell you about this Horween leather is <laughs> it's really tough to describe the feel of this particular leather. The best analogy that I can come up with is that it feels like a chocolate bar. Now, you know, you know what I mean? Like it actually looks like a chocolate bar. It doesn't smell much like one. It smells like beautiful leather. It actually has a fantastic smell to this particular Bible. But uh, if you take a Hershey bar, unwrap it and feel how smooth the back is, that's exactly what this Bible feels like. It has a much smoother sensation than many of the other high-end leather Bibles that I've had do. But sometimes they feel slightly granular. Sometimes they feel slightly rough. Uh, sometimes they're highly textured. But as you can tell from looking at this leather here, there's not a lot of texture to this particular grain, but it is going to acquire its own texture because the leather does seem to receive wear. I would love to do a crash test on this Bible and just throw it in my backpack for a couple of weeks at a time, just carry it around everywhere and see what this leather looks like. And maybe I should, maybe I should do that. Uh, but here's a closer look at some of the corners uh, right here. Very fine leather crafting work, as we would expect this Bible being done by Youngblood in the Netherlands. And here's a look at the spine right here. This is kind of a unique spine. For Crossway, it's very understated. A lot of Crossway's Bibles have almost too much going on on the spine. Sometimes I have two or three or 17 ESV logos. Kidding, of course, but sometimes they overdo it with the ESV stuff. In this case, we have Holy Bible, we have their ESV logo, and then we have English Standard Version printed out in script, as well as a nice crossway. Now, this is called blind stamping here, which means it's stamped into the grain, but it doesn't have the gold within it. And so that makes it look quite understated. Now, honestly, this would be one of my minor critiques on this Bible, as I think a, a Bible with this particular price tag should have the gold stamping on there. And I'll show you another place in a minute, too, where I, I think that they missed an opportunity to really make this stand out. I can imagine that if this had the gold stamping, it would just shine forth like the stars in a night sky. So in my opinion, maybe they missed an opportunity there, but I definitely see the look that they're going for. And, it, you know, if you show up for a presbytery meeting or a Bible study with this, it, you're not showing off. It's a really high quality edition of the scriptures, but I don't feel <laughs> like sometimes when I show up with this, uh, I've got this R.L. Allen ESV study Bible. This thing is so fancy. It just glistens. And I almost feel like it's too much. It feels like I'm like I'm showing off. I wouldn't feel like that with this particular Bible right here. Uh, but the spine is definitely a little bit understated now. Again, here's another shot at the, the corner work here. The corner work isn't super duper fantastic, but I think that has to do with just how thick this particular leather is. This is a really thick leather. Some people have described this as like a boot leather or like a belt leather. It's really quite something very much unlike other things that Crossway has done before. Now, here's an example right here. I hope you can see this. Um, 
this would be a little ding in the leather. And I could probably put dings in the leather pretty easily with my fingernails or just throwing it in and out of my, my backpack. Even, even if I throw like, I don't know, some object on my desk and toss it on top of my Bible, not that you should do that. I could see that actually putting some good marks in this leather. It's going to scar up really nice, which again, I think is going to be very cool. Now, here's what I mean by patina. That's a leather term, which is when you fold the leather, it, it actually changes color. Can you see this line right here, how this is a slightly lighter co color right here? And that's because if I take the corner and I work this corner, if I bend this, I can actually change the color of the leather. You can see that. Maybe not, um, but you get the idea. It's gonna do that. And the more I bend this cover, the more I shape this cover, the more I manipulate it over time, just naturally as I'm preaching and studying with it, it's gonna patina more and more. And eventually this thing is gonna look amazing. I can't wait to see what this is gonna look like in a year from now. Um, so what you get here, you get four colored ribbons. Now Crossway is not necessarily known for the ribbons. I personally wish, wish they, they would go to a little bit wider of a ribbon. Uh, maybe a little softer of a ribbon too, but these are nice. You get four different colors here. You get a brown, a black, a, what is that? A cream and a, well, actually there's just three different colors of brown. This one looks kind of blue right here on my screen, but it's three different colors of brown and a cream. All right, here's the inside. If you open up, you got a really nice leather liner. You're going to notice that this liner here has a different texture than the outside of the Bible did. This has more of a very, very, very tiny pebble grain texture right here. And again, you can have a little bit of a look at the corner work going along the edges. Now, here's another place where I think that Crossway might have missed an opportunity. I would have liked to see that gold gilt line coming right down here. I think that would just be a little bit of an added touch. Some Bibles have that. Again, if I just pull out my Allen by way of comparison, you can see right there, I've got this gold gilt line that goes around the inside of the liner. I just think that's a really nice look. And it makes it look a little bit more finished. And again, Crossway, hey, if you're listening for $300, I want to throw in a couple of those little extra touches. I think that'd be a fantastic idea. Closer look at the corner work here. And again, you can really see that pebbled grain on the inner part of the liner. Now, of course, this is a, uh, an edge lined Bible. And you can always see that in a Bible. If you open up any good Bible and you see this line right here, this is where this piece of leather here over on the left folds over and it grabs onto the text block itself. And that's what's going to be the difference between a, a paste down liner and an edge lined Bible. Okay, this is the better form, of course. If you've ever had a Bible split right here, that's because um, you probably have a paste down liner and a real edge lined double leather cover has two pieces of leather, got the outside and it's got the inside. This inner liner then folds over and grabs onto the block, and that's going to make sure it does not pull away from the text block. And you should not theoretically have any failure points in this sort of a system. And you can go for years, even decades, without a failure point if you have this. And if your Bible comes apart, if it's fallen apart, it's probably because it's a paste down liner. And it's probably because it's glued rather than being sewn. This, of course, is a Smythe sewn Bible. So no fears there that's going to have any kind of structural wear. All right, we open up this Bible to the inside. We've got a nice clean presentation page. Some of you fill these out. Some of you don't. If you're thinking about trading or reselling this Bible, better not do it. If you're thinking about keeping it forever or giving it as a gift, go ahead and fill that baby out. I like to fill out my presentation pages because it reminds me of where I got the Bible, who I got it from, and if there's any particular circumstances related to it. All right, open this up. And of course, this is going to be the 2016 text edition. And of course, you have the name here, the ESV Bible Heirloom Bible Heritage Edition. Some more information. Now here we can see that we're back in the Netherlands. And this is a very good thing because uh, they're the best over there. Youngblood is the name of the company that produces these high-end Bibles and their paper, their quality, their sewing, their covers are all absolutely fantastic. And if you're wondering, if you ever wonder what these numbers down here mean, here's here it is right there, J-O-N-G. That's the indicator that young blood is the one who put this Bible together. If you ever wonder what these strange numbers look like right here, this 21 indicates the year in which this Bible came out, and the one right here indicates the first edition. So next year, they'll move this line over, and you'll have a 22 there. And uh, then you'll probably have the second edition. So they'll wipe this out next time they print it. And that's how you can tell on most books and good Bibles of what year it is and what printing edition it is. 
All right, if we open up this Bible, let's go ahead and move my face over here to the other side of the page. You have a really nice, clean layout. And as you can see here, the Heritage Edition is a single column edition. Now, there was another Bible called the Heritage Edition that came out a number of years ago by Crossway. And I was real excited when they told me they were going to send me a heritage because I like to have two Bibles that are exactly the same, the exact same pagination for me. That's really, really helpful to my mental layout. I'm kind of a visual learner. And so I was really excited to get another heritage. But when I opened it up, I realized that they completely reset the entire thing. And one of the things that's different, of course, is that this Bible is physically larger than the previous heritage, but they didn't just expand the footprint. Instead, they retypeset the entire thing. So unfortunately, if you have an older heritage edition, it's not going to match up page for page and line for line as I wish it would. But I was really blown away at how beautiful this, la this layout is. Single column, again, nine point something font, pretty large font. And one of the things that struck me right away is the leading between the lines. This is the amount of space between these lines. It's really excellent. That makes it's such a delightful reading experience to put my face back over here, get myself out of the way. And if we have a little bit of a closer look here, you can see that the printing is just fantastic. This is what Youngblood does so expertly, as all of their Bibles are printed with fantastic precision. Nice big verse numbers, too. I'm pleased to see that. Now, these are the bolder verse numbers. They're not as big as I wish. Um, if I had my way in the Bible publishing world, verse numbers would be humongous, at least the size of the text, possibly even a little bit bigger. Uh, but because of all the readers editions, a lot of publishers have gone with minimized little, um, little verse numbers there. And as a preacher myself, who's constantly telling people to find this verse or this paragraph, I particularly like larger verse numbers. And these are bold, so these are pretty good. And because this Bible is not a reference Bible, it's not going to be cluttered with all kinds of other numbers and letters. But the downside then is that you don't have that reference suite of cross-reference materials within the Bible itself. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look uh, here. You can see even better uh, the larger chapter numbers. You have your section headings here, a nice space in between to give it a nice kind of spread out, airy feel to it. Lots of room there. That's a good look at the uh, the print. You have this little section down here. These are going to be your footnotes at the bottom of the page. It's not the huge reference suite, though. It's just going to be your, your uh, manuscript notes, your translation notes where necessary. And then from time to time, when one scripture quotes another, you'll get that indicator as well. This Bible does have a little bit of a gutter margin here. Um, if I have a look at it with my eye, and I did not measure this, I'm going to say... It's not quite an inch, but it looks a little bit more than half an inch. And so that's pretty good. So if you're a Bible note taker, you're going to have room all the way around the four margins of this Bible. The one thing I don't like is when the text runs too close to the gutter, because then sometimes when you have your Bible open, this, this kind of spills into, this kind of pours into that gutter. And sometimes it's hard to read the center, especially when you've got the Bible open right to the middle of the book. But that's not going to be a problem with this Heritage Edition at all. And in fact, as a wide margin note taker in almost all of my Bibles, I can't stop writing notes in all of my editions. I was very pleased to see this could probably be considered a hand-sized wide margin edition. And I really, really mean that. About an inch is a standard definition of what a wide margin is. And um, though it doesn't quite meet that on any one of the four sides, we're really close. And given especially how big this font is and how big this print is, this nice wide open space here. This feels like a ton of room for note takers to play, uh, to make citation, to make comments. Maybe if you have a miscellaneous journal, you can, you can reference some other notes and other notebooks that you have. And again, here, look at the size of that margin. I mean, come on, that's pretty close to a wide margin edition, especially when we're talking about a text block that is about hand size. Okay, this is not the nine and a half by six and a half regular size, full size footprint. This is actually a little bit smaller than that. It's more like an eight and a half by five and a half. And you rarely see margins this wide on a single column Bible like this. So this is, this is stunning. This is fantastic. And this page right here, it gives you a good look at the, uh, the art guilting here. This is gold over the salmon color. So when you flay the pages out like this, you get this nice, beautiful salmon color right along there. Now, again, wouldn't that gold little strip right there be perfect? I think that would just be so nice. 
Okay, and here's the bottom margin right here. Once again, plenty of room. Now this page doesn't happen to have any footnotes, which would take up a little bit more space if they were present, but man, that's a pretty substantial footprint for you to go ahead and take some notes. And so you've got really four sides, four margins for plenty of note-taking possibilities. And again, for somebody like me, who's a Bible writer, man, that's just awesome. So when we open it up and we give the, uh, the full eagle wings look here, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful layout. I mean, here we are in the poetic sections. We've looked at some narrative sections earlier, but when we get into the poetic sections, it just feels like that space you have is just even more so. I mean, you got all kinds of room here. I love this. It feels like an open field. I just want to run out there and just <laughs> like in a movie, I just want to run through the field or something like that. Uh, beautiful, beautiful text here. And by the way, the paper in this edition is, is just awesome. I'm so glad that they're back with young blood in the Netherlands rather than being in China because this paper is back to the to the best. I mean, this is some really good stuff. I'm not sure of the exact GSM. I, I'm gonna guess it's either a 28 or a 30. I don't think it's gonna get much higher into the 30s. I could be wrong and somebody could correct me in the comments of this video if you'd like, but this feels strong, it feels sturdy, it's good. Uh, paper. I have not written any notes in this one yet, so I can't exactly tell you how much bleed through there is. I will tell you, though, that I'm looking at this Bible here in real life in my hand, and I'm also looking at the same screen that you're looking at here. I will tell you that this ghosting, this bleed through, which you see, it's not really bleed through. There's no ink bleeding through the paper at all. It's just showing through, but it is worse on the screen than it is in real life, okay? So what I'm telling you is the paper is better here in my hand with actual natural light I've got fluorescent lights above me and a huge window out there that you can't see. The paper looks much better in my hand here in real life than it does on the screen. And I think it looks pretty good on the screen too. So you'll be pleased with the show through of the paper. Okay, uh, this page, I just wanna in indicate here that this is a black letter text. Now I already mentioned that once, but this is, does not have red letter for the words of Christ. So if that's determinative for you, then you might want to take that into consideration. For me, it doesn't matter either way. I don't have a problem with it, and I don't have a benefit to the red letters. Sometimes, if anything, the red letters help, again, for that visual spatial memory of where certain sections are in, in, in the Bible, but um, I'm not really dependent on that either way. Here's an example of a page where you do have some of the light cross-references. Now, you'll notice that these are all from the Old Testament here, and I believe this is Romans 9. I could be wrong. Uh, it, I should know this. Uh, some one of you would tell me. Uh, but notice here that the Old Testament scriptures are those that are cited in the text itself. So, for instance, this footnote F right here that you can see is Deuteronomy 32 21. So, that's how that reference suite works. It's not the full reference suite, but a light reference suite only when the scriptures are quoting other places. Okay, this picture right here, I just wanted to show you that uh, new books of the Bible start on new pages. So I like the fact that you have this extra clean space here again for a note taker. I'm thinking, oh yeah, there's an extra space for some theological content or some lists or something like that. I have a whole video on how to make uh, notes in your Bible. So I like this. I like books starting on new pages and it just looks crisp and fresh to my eye. At the back of the book, you don't have a lot. There is no, uh, there's no, there's no concordance. You do have a table of weights and measures, but that's pretty standard. Pretty much every Bible has that. And uh, you also have a few pages of nice, clean writing paper. So if you want to make your travel log, or if you want to make your miscellaneous uh, table of contents or something like that, feel free to do that here. And then of course you do get the pretty standard crossway maps. Uh, this picture just indicates how nicely it holds in the hand. I do think this Bible would be particularly excellent for preaching because of its size, very manageable. It's not heavy, it's not unwieldy, it's not large, um, but it's got a huge font for the size, for the size of this Bible. The font is really, really readable. I'll have to ask my wife what she thinks because uh, her eyes are the opposite of mine. I can see small, she can see far away. Together we're a pair, um, but she might have an issue with this font. I don't, not at all. And I don't think most readers will have a problem. So there it is in the hand. So you can kind of get an approximation to how large this Bible actually is. 
when you hold it in the hand. It's not a huge Bible. It's not unwieldy and the shape is real natural. So it's not like a clarion that has kind of that weird shape to it. People that use the, the Cambridge clarion, sometimes they say the shape's a little bit weird. Not so with this very natural feel to it. Closer look here at the spine again, uh, here is going to show you some of the wear that you're going to see. This Bible is going to look awesome. Now, if you're one of those kind of prissy people that don't like any marks or smudges or, you know, you, just keep it in the box then. But for those of us who are going to use it, this Bible is going to be super awesome. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. Here's even a little, a little ding that I put just by mistake, even, even as I was preparing for this for this video. So it's pretty sensitive le leather, but that is not a bug. That is a feature in this particular Bible. That's what the horror ween leather does. It's going to look amazing. Well, hey, thank you so much for checking into this video. Um, this Bible is not scheduled to come out until sometime in December, December of 2021. So I'm in the middle of November right now. So by the time I'm making this video, it's not even available. I don't know if you can pre-order it or not. It'd be nice. What I'll do is I'll post a link in the description of this video, both to Amazon and to Crossway. So if you're interested, you can search this Bible out and grab one for yourself. Again, thank you so much to Crossway. I do want to say Crossway is an amazing friend of this particular YouTube channel. They give me this stuff for free because they love me and I love them. So it's a wonderful working relationship. Thank you so much, Crossway, for thinking of sending this to me. I do hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. And again, if you're anywhere north of Pittsburgh in Western Pennsylvania, please come check us out. Gospel Fellowship PCA. That's the name of our church. We do love you lots. And we'll talk to you later.